And you did demonstrations in Britain? No. <laughs> Why should we bother? We're used to it. <laughs> or in any European country? No. Brazil, the only leader who cancelled a state visit to the White House and a big banquet uh, uh, at the White House was uh, Dilma Rousseff. She did it. She, you know, at least did something. It's not <laughs> Whereas the German Chancellor Angela Merkel objected to all this, but did very little. Said we don't like it because it reminds us of the Stasi. And, well, thank you very much. Yes, but it's much, much worse than the Stasi. The Stasi didn't have the ability to do this. The United States do, and they don't deny it. I mean. This is what we can still read about. What is the other challenge facing Western democracies? That effectively, the mainstream parties are virtually the same. On fundamentals, whether you're centre-left or centre-right, you fight in Parliament, you make a mock fight, you know, fake wrestling, you abuse each other a bit, uh, and then the press can say, oh, X did well today, Y did well today, oh, Z wasn't bad, you know. But what are they talking about? Anything that changes the lives of ordinary people in a fundamental way, not cosmetic changes here and there which could be taken back any day, no. So the American form of politics, Tweedledum Tweedledee, is now part and parcel of much of Europe. Where a mass movement produces something resembling the social movements of South America in Greece, and Syriza comes close to defeating the left center and the right center, the whole European leadership goes crazy. Holland rushes, the newly elected president of France, rushes to Athens. God knows how he found the time, given what he's up to. <laughs> it would have been better had he been enjoying his croissants over the <laughs> But he finds the time to go to Greece where the croissants aren't very nice. <laughs> and to tell the Greek people, to tell the Greek people, whatever else you do, don't vote for Syriza, your lives, your jobs will be in danger, we can't defend you. The blackmail that was used by the European elite against Syriza. And then Alexis Tsipras, the leader of Syriza, made a mistake as far as these people were concerned. When asked, is there any politician in the world who you admire greatly, he said, yes, Hugo Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> a Greek politician, and they must have been going mad, saying, what? What do the Greeks know about South America? Uh, news travels. <laughs> news travels. So, we are now in the middle of a big campaign in Venezuela to destabilize the government of, Trump, uh, of uh, Nicolas Maduro. Very clearly done. These two rogue politicians openly collaborated with the American embassy. Openly. It's not a secret to anyone, either them or us. But why did the Americans do it now? They could have tried the other method. Admittedly, it failed with Chavez because the Venezuelan constitution is the most democratic constitution in the world in the, right, in the sense that it gives people the right to recall a sitting president in mid-term provided they get enough signatures. And even though some of the signatures they got when they tried to recall Chavez in the referendum, a lot of these signatures came from dead people, we know that. But the Bolivarians said, carry on, let's have the referendum. They want it, let's have it. And they were defeated. So maybe they decided it's not a safe idea, but constitutionally they had the right to do that. No other country in the world has a constitution in which you're allowed to get rid of a president democratically via uh, a referendum in the middle of his term. The Venezuelans too. I mean, how many 
leaders in the Western world might we have got rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> are being made to solve these problems, to sort them out. And not just in uh, Venezuela, but other parts of the continent as well. And so it is something we can hold up as a mirror to people in the rest of the world, saying it is possible to have a health system that serves the needs of people who can't afford medicine. It is possible to have a free education system. It is possible to create social missions in different parts of the world which enable and empower people to carry out these. The important thing is that they work. And nearly two million people now have been educated in these missions. It's a fine record. And the fact that one has even to say this is disgraceful really because everyone should know it but you don't know it because the, the, the media campaign has been what it has been. And so the legacy Hugo Chavez left behind we are very proud of. And we are proud of it because he did something which many had thought was impossible to do in a world so completely and totally dominated by the American social, political and economic system. And they did it. But the challenges lie there. The challenges lie on the streets in Caracas and Merida, where the opposition has essentially declared war. The, camp the campaign they are waging, Salida, trying to force the exit of a president who was elected very recently in an election everyone said was fair, so even the opposition stopped talking about it. A president who has called in mayors from sort of sane opposition groups and tried to sit, sit down with them and talk to them. And they panicked, partially because of that, but partially because the instructions for a campaign of this sort and on this level come from one embassy, the American embassy. No doubt they're involved uh, in this. And why do they want to create such a breakdown of law and order that the army has to take over and then they can say, oh, we always told you they were a military dictator. <laughs> or do they want actually to provoke an incident in which large numbers of people trying to storm a military barracks are killed? I don't know what it is. We have to say to our friends in Venezuela, don't be provoked. There so far, it's been, you know, there have been deaths, but there have been no major uh, acts by the government so that this argument can, can be claimed. So one of, the, one of the legacies of Chavez is to fight. And to fight back against who are trying to destabilize and topple popular governments. And I think the solidarity campaign in this country has played an important part. I, I have to say that no such solidarity campaign on this level exists in any other European country. I travel a lot to these countries. There are small groups of people well-meaning, but not a campaign which has involved the trade union movement, sympathetic members of parliament, ordinary people, to try and explain uh, what is going on. Now, I'm being very honored and touched that I was asked to give the inaugural Hugo Chavez Memorial Lecture. And one of the legacies of Bolivar and Chavez is, of course, that this is not simply about one country, it's about a continent. So I hope that future lectures will engage in discussing what is going on in other countries within the whole of 